if you do not have a defined system, sales and marketing system within your business, which can help you remove any one individual and can help you scale what through predicting and forecasting your growth objectives, that is all you need to worry about right now. Big or small, trading, home service business, just answer the phone. And if we don't have a good system of answering the phone, then we're going to miss out on whatever percentage of phone calls that aren't there. My take for any home service business is their first hire should be an office admin, somebody to take the phone calls that are going to come in inevitably so when they've done all the other marketing like work. Hello listeners and viewers, welcome back to the third and final episode that I'm conducting with my series co-host here, Rock, Ross McDaniel from fencepost.co. Uh, this episode is called Closing the Deal. We're mastering techniques here for essentially sales uh, to help you guys close with better conversions. Um, episode one was a conversation around review, uh, review re revolutions and how to, I suppose, get better reviews, how to make it part of your process. Episode two, we were discussing uh, whether or not and when is the right time to be uh, implementing paid traffic from an ads perspective into your strategy? And this episode, because as I mentioned before, we're going to be talking a little bit about how to close some of these deals using some uh, some techniques that Ross and I have both seen across different markets. So obviously, my agency, Trading Web Guys, is um, based in Australia, and Ross is, is over in um, Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta, Augusta, yeah. the the big the Augusta. big A. It's actually the little A. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got some good feedback and insights from in the trenches in both these markets. So hopefully you guys get a lot out of this. Um, I'm just going to handball this one to you, Ross, to get this one started. Sure. Yeah. So when we're looking at like, how do we actually uh, take somebody that has just encountered our business to sold customer, right? A lot of times for all of us, that's going to be the first step is going to be a phone call. They've either reached out to us via you know, a friend or a family member or whatever else um, has said great things about our business and they're giving us a ring or they've searched for something and stumbled across us because you have awesome SEO and whatever else and they're going to give us a call. Well, what happens if you don't answer the phone? And I think that's the big thing that um, at least in my agency side, like we're looking through our call rail and our, our call tracking and we're just seeing miss call, miss call, miss call, miss call, miss call. Well, I mean, what do you do if you are missing all of the leads that you're either paying for or working hard to build your reputation for or whatever else? The single most like game changing cheat, cheat code is just answer the phone. And we can talk more about like, how do we answer the phone more? But that's the, that's the, the tease for this episode. I mean, you know, um, that's such a, such a huge issue that we've seen. <clears throat> and this is the, the, the general consensus around this is and this is the big problem like like i was saying um in the previous episode like generating the leads is actually not so much the hard part it's the system behind managing the leads yeah. that is important right and and this is what we've seen all the time chip up and and to the point now where we uh like our model actually involves answering the, those leads for the client because we just know that if they are busy climbing ladders and swinging hammers they're probably not going to answer that phone but what inevitably happens is the conversation goes back, oh, no, the leads are no good. That's and it's inevitable. like, well, no, hang on, the leads are actually good. It's just that your system sucks. And so, like, this is why I was saying in the previous episode, it's so super important that people have a, uh, a system within the business that actually works before you start throwing money into ads, to generate leads. You don't want to be, you don't want to be throwing, uh, like, pouring leads into a system that's failing. A leaky bucket. And it's the whole leaky exactly. bucket metaphor. Yeah, like if you're pouring a bunch of water into a bucket that's got holes in it, it's just going to leak out the bottom. I, I don't know. Like yeah. one of the, the, the more recent conundrums that we've come across is that, yes, they're, they're starting to answer the phone. We've got some great training for that. They, they're starting to answer the phone, um, and they're actually getting estimates. Uh, then they're getting the job. But the jobs aren't worth enough. This is this particular one's like f with a with an electrician that we have, and the jobs just aren't worth enough to justify the cost per lead. Going back to the last episode, we've got to talk about that at some point. Um, but here, there's a huge opportunity. So they've 
they've answered the phone, they've sold the business or they've given the quote, they've sold the business, but now there's no like upsell or there's no continued what for, uh, future vision of like, what, what could this customer That's actually be? Here. Yeah, what could this customer actually yeah. be worth? And so having that system refined starts with answering the phone and making sure that we're, we're capturing all of that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think the, like a lot of businesses sort of come to an agency looking for a silver bullet and they think leads is the problem and, or traffic's the problem. And it's often not the case. It's in most cases, I mean, it is like in the, in the bigger picture of like forecasting growth as we spoke about in the previous episode, but like sometimes we'll see that traffic is not the problem. Like we look at our own, like this is a conversation we're having internally at the moment, like our own asset. Like we don't have a traffic problem, we have a conversion problem on our assets. Hmm. So like we don't need to be driving traffic to, we have enough traffic, we need to improve our conversions so that the traffic we're getting converts more. And to put like a numerical number on that for you guys out there that are listening, if you're currently just say you to use easy numbers, you're spending a thousand bucks a month on Google ads and your you know, website's converting at say 2%, if you raise the conversion on your website to 4%, you're still spending a thousand bucks, but you're getting a hundred percent improvement. That's right. So under, understanding these dynamics is what's really important. And this, this is what comes down to the system behind it, because it's very often not the initial conversation around leads. It's the problem. It's the system behind it. And once that system's dialed in, and once that system is consistently hitting like the numbers that I mean, we are anal about it, like within the business, because we know exactly what those numbers need to look like for each of our verticals. And if, if they're not hitting that, then we won't pour fuel on the fire. But once we hit it, it's, it's go, baby. It's ready. And that then is, the, is the, exactly. And then typically the thing that falls over beyond that is like we've addressed leads, we've addressed the sales conversation. So we're getting conversions where we need to be, blah, blah, blah. Then the next thing that needs to be developed is fulfillment. And that is normally a conversation around team and scale. Team and scale. Matt, this series should actually be called like the Trady Systems Improvement Podcast. Like this, this is the <laughs> this is the the systems improvement series. But I think you're exactly right. And like there's an order of operations to things. And I don't know. There's some bizarre stat. There's a stat for everything, right? But I think uh, maybe Bright Local or something put out a stat uh, a few years ago. Like 47 percent of phone calls went unanswered uh, to small businesses. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, question. And and I think there's just like really big, just low hanging ripe fruit to be had for your local plumbers or your multi location plumbers, your multi location roofers, whatever else, um, big or small, tradey home service business, just to answer the phone. And if we don't have a good system of answering the phone, then we're going to miss out on whatever percentage of phone calls that aren't there. Um, and that's like I'll the tell you the, big, the yeah, the biggest the biggest problem is. Um, is as well the the lack like again tying back to the system it's the lack of like cadence deliberate cadence that happens when leads come into a business mm. through whatever measure phone calls forms ads whatever it might be and like and I'll, and I'll tell you like the, the two sides of the equation the one of them is okay well with this lead came in we called them they didn't answer so no good that doesn't play that's a absolute churn and burn mentality. It's not about lead coming in, call them and then relegate to opportunity loss. That's not what it's like. There's a cadence that needs to happen there, which involves multiple touch points in order for that contact to become a marketing qualified lead yeah, or, and then ideally a sales qualified lead, right? <clears throat> and the difference between a marketing qualified lead is, is like someone who answers the phone and actually have a conversation, whereas sales qualified lead is, okay, someone who's booked in for a site visit or whatever it might be. Now, the, 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 where most businesses drop the ball is in that cadence. And like we quite literally, I mean, even yesterday, like one of our roofing clients, you know, we put out, well, we have our sales agent who's just recently deployed in, in that business. And in the first week, he's booked four site visits for this roofing client, right? Now that client hasn't hadn't booked. He booked a couple, I think, in the in the months that we've been working together. But the point is, like taking these leads through this defined deliberate cadence, is absolute absolute game changer, because it means that you're maximising the opportunity, you know, for these leads to actually become customers. Something. Most businesses won't do that. They'll call them once. They'll call them twice, maybe, and then that's it. They didn't answer their, their shitty lead. 
and that's a it's a it's a absolute waste of money. And then often that comes back then to the agency, oh your leads are no good. It's like, well no, your leads the lead's fine. The lead quality's great. Your system's shit. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's probably tie back to the process conversation. It's like you've got to have that dialed in before you can start talking about scaling the volume because scaling the volume before you have the process, that's a fast track to burning leads. It's burning a fast money. track to burning leads. And then what you just said to burning money as a result. And I think if we're spending good money on, on leads, making sure that like, I mean, we can, we can turn, turn ads off at any point in time, we can, pull a page and replace a form. We can do whatever we need to do to give time to be able to plug the holes in that system along the way. What does your team do for quality assurance and testing? Because I do think there's a measure of like, sometimes we just don't know that the system's broken. We don't know that so-and-so on the other end is actually like not getting a certain uh, phone call or answering a phone call well or well, whatever. we just do it all. <laughs> so yeah. we, yeah, we just do the whole thing. So that, that the, the, the client doesn't have to deal with it. All they do is show up for the site visit. That's what we do. But the, but like that qualification and disqualification process, it needs to be defined and deliberate and in line with what the business deems as qualified. And, and, and then that, that attention needs to be played to, paid to the process and the time and the deliverables and the contact points that need to happen within that time frame in order for that opportunity to be maximized. Hmm. And one thing I will say on this as well, well, a couple of things, but like we see all the time, Businesses that um, uh, they receive, like a lead can come in to a business or a contact can come into a business, opportunity can be created in the system for like a deal, right? And that deal may, may not go ahead, but it doesn't mean the opportunity, the, the contact is bad. That's it true. just means at that point in time, the opportunity is not right for them. And you'll see it a lot. Like we deal with relatively large sales cycle businesses, like take home renovations and building and stuff like that. But the sales cycle for that could be years. Now that opportunity might not go ahead immediately, but it doesn't mean that the contact's bad. It just means that right there and then they're not, they're not, something's not lining up for them. And it could be a million things. It could be budget, understand like a misunderstanding of budget. It could be logistics, time frame. It could be anything, right? Or it could purely be just ignorance in relation to where they are in that process. They might not have development application through from council. There could be a number of different variables which are preventing them from being able to, uh, for that opportunity, be right for them right there and then. But it doesn't mean the contact's bad. No. And so when you hear these, you know, this feedback and people say, "Oh, yeah, the leads were no good, so we deleted them," like you're an idiot. You just deleted a, like you deleted them because the opportunity wasn't right. But it doesn't mean they're not right. So and then that fuels again like that presents like opportunity and obligation for the business where they can be like, okay, cool. Well then how do we like nurture, educate and like, how do we be useful to this individual from the point they've come to us and to the point where they are actually ready to make a decision because that's the difference. And if the business that does that the best will win the deal. Oh man, that's a line right there. The business that does that the best will win the deal. Stick that on a t-shirt. Yeah, stick it. No, I, I think you're right. I, I think my whole shtick with, my customers or my, my clients has always been just like answer the phone. Um, there's an ad rolling around for, I, I don't know if you've gotten served it, but like he says, call the damn leads. Like that's all, all he's about. Um, <laughs> I think he does something similar to we do, but um, I mean, the premise is the same. It's like, take, be a good steward of the traffic that's coming your way, whether that is um, a phone call or a form fill or whatever else, be a good steward with that and treat it as if it is a resource until it actually proves itself out to not be a resource for your business. Um, plug those holes in those buckets. Yeah, I'm with you. Here's the unfortunate reality. For this to be done right, it's, it's quite heavy on resource. It takes a lot of time, takes a lot of effort, but it, it cannot be relegated on the list of important things to do because it's the one thing that fuels everything else. And what I mean by that is, yes, I appreciate that you might be up on the roof installing, but when these leads come in, if they're not given priority, then you're not fueling the engine, which enables you to be up on the roof doing the installs. Now you might be saying, okay, but that's great, but then how can I do everything? And the answer is you probably can't. That's the answer. So you have that's to find a team that can help you do it. And that's the bottom line. It's not like a conversation of, well, if I have the time, I'll do it. it no, it can't be that. You have to make a decision 
If you want this outcome, you have to do the thing. And the thing could either be you doing it, like the first part of our process is always remove the business owner from anything to do with the sales conversation. Hmm. Like that's the first thing we do because we know every single time, like if it's the business owner that's doing it at that right there and then, and truthfully, even sometimes like internal salespeople, like if, if it's up to them to be doing all the lead qualification and triage and then also doing the actual site visits and closing the deal, it's too much load. And so the biggest, the first thing is always, how do we get the business owner out of the equation? Because they're the ones that fuck it up every time. Every time. And I'm the guy. Like, this is like the ongoing bottleneck of a business owner. Like, you take one hat off, you put another one on, you know? So progress, and, and, and I suppose this is what formulates, like, the, the system behind it, right? It's like, this is why I'm so banging on about the system. It's like, what, it's the system that will enable you to scale because it doesn't, it's not dependent on anyone. It shouldn't be dependent on any one individual. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, and sneak peek for the audience there. Uh, yes, it is also my issue of, you know, remove myself from being the bottleneck. And Matt was generous to, to say that we're not alone. Um, and if you're in that boat, everybody else is too, but that's the mission, right? And, I, you may fight me on this, Matt. My my take for any home service business is their first hire should be an office admin, somebody to take the phone calls that are going to come in inevitably. So when they've done all the other marketing like work. Well, I mean, I, yeah, it depends on the business and it depends on their objectives and it depends on the model they're using in order. Like if, if you're running paid traffic and you're getting a lot of leads, then that's going to be the bottleneck. But if you're if your first hire, if, if at the moment you can't deliver on the referrals that you're getting through fulfillment because you haven't got enough team in the field, then you're going to be better off hiring an apprentice or someone out there that can help you do the thing. That's you know? true. It so depends on the, on the circumstances. Each business can have a different bottleneck and you need to identify what that is, not just like sort of go in and think, oh, okay, well, this is the problem for you because it was the problem for them. Like that's not always the case. That's a good call out. Mm. But anyway, look, this is a good conversation. I'm not even going to bother going into like specific sales related conversations because truthfully, I don't think it's relevant. I think the number one thing that people that you guys out there that are watching this or listening to this, you need to understand is that if you do not have a defined system, sales and marketing system within your business, which can help you remove any one individual and can help you scale what through predicting and forecasting your growth objectives, that is all you need to worry about right now. That is it. There's nothing else. Just start there because the conversation around sales is an ongoing evolution and it's something that will continually grow and adapt as your business um, evolves. But you need to start somewhere and the system is where you should start. In, like with my experience and my observation, 100% of the time that's been the case. Hmm. Well, I can't say no to that. <laughs> Look, man, this has been a really good conversation. I think we've got a lot of uh, alignment with it's, – it's good to hear that things in, in, in your market are sort of in align with things we see over in this market. It definitely. Um, yeah, and I appreciate you coming on the show and I appreciate your time. It's been, it's been a good collab. It's been a good collab. Thanks for having me on. I, I also am just like astounded at the, the overlap. And I think a lot of that's, you know, like cultural, but at, at some level – consumers are consumers and our job is to to serve them well and the audience here your job is to serve them well as well so um let's set out to do that yeah that's right. and i suppose in closing i'd just like to say um just be certain with when you're delivering or having a conversation around things that you're providing people with what they need to hear which does not always which is not always what they want to hear and that's okay and it's okay because in the interest of managing expectations, being able to tell someone the truth oh. is what's going to make the difference to them looking forward. And it might not, it might not even result in a sale for you, but I wouldn't get caught up with that because as long as you're equipping people with the information they need based on actual facts and data, like don't fall into that trap of just giving people something because they've asked for it. And I'll give you a prime example. Hi, I'm looking for a 6.6 .6 kilowatt solar system. Okay, sure. Well, let me come and install that. And then, you know, three months later after the next quarterly bill, the conversation is, well, our energy bill hasn't really dropped at all. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that was your priority. If that was the case, we would have put a battery in too because it's obviously using all your energy in the evenings. 
Like, don't give people what they want. Give people what they need that aligns with their outcomes. Outcomes-based marketing. Yeah. All right, man. Um, Ross, people can get hold of you over at fencepost.co. Guys, I'll have links and everything in the uh, show notes where you can get hold of Ross. And if you have any questions or if we haven't covered off on anything, let us know. I'm sure Ross will come back on the show to do a bit more of a deep dive. Uh, Ross, I appreciate your time and your wisdom in this area. Thank you so much for coming on and collabing. Yeah, Matt. Thanks for having me. Thanks, audience. Appreciate you guys. Okie dokie. That is a wrap. New Zealand-based home renovation company, 6,593% ROAS. Sydney-based solar company, 2,700% ROAS. Hunter region-based bathroom renovation company, 5,616% ROAS. Melbourne-based building company, 13,182% return on ad spend. Adelaide-based solar company, 2,881% return on ad spend. Guys, the list goes on and on. If you were a trade-based business and you work with projects like roofing, solar, bathroom renovations, kitchen renovations, anything like that, head across to tradey.wiki forward slash pod for podcast. tradey.wiki forward slash pod for podcast. Book in a conversation. It is game changing.